Now let's talk about notifications. All right. How many of you have seen the notifications? Like whenever a message arrives, you see a message notification on under the top window. All right. Whenever you get a new email, all right, you get the notification that you have a new email. All right. So how are we going to achieve this up with the help of Android applications? We'll see this up in this example. So we have a class, all right? We have a class in order to use the notifications, right? So the notification manager is the class that provides us the notification services, all right? So that we can use any sort of service in order to notify the user. Let me also tell you about something which is very important to understand here. We use a pending intent here. Let me tell you about pending intents. The pending intents are the ones which we register for the device in memory, all right? It's like I create an intent with my application that does not need an activity to launch. Just let me know if there is any sort of questions and understanding this because this is very important to understand. The pending intents are the ones that do not need any activity to launch them up. They are the ones that are running with the system. I just register a pending intent and as soon as a time appears, the pending intent will show up on the screen. Let me give you a small example for this. We have alarms. We have alarm managers in our devices. We set up alarms in order to wake up in the morning. Is that correct? We all set alarms in order to wake up in the morning. But if I try to set alarms, how does the system know when I have to call you up or say when I have to wake up? What it does is it, it registers a pending intent, right? It registers a pending intent with the application so that whenever you have to raise the alarm, the pending intent will notify you that the alarm was set up for some and some time and you have to wake up at some and some time. Everybody can understand or make references out of the example that I'm quoting here. For example, I'll show you another example. I'll take, give you another example. How many of you have seen whenever the time zone changes, you see a notification that the time zone has changed. I'll tell you, whenever you are traveling and your device comes into a new time zone, all right, it automatically notifies you that this is a new time zone. Do you want to say change it, change this to the new time zone or not? So that is something which is again a time zone difference. So you can receive the activity via the pending intent dot get activity. So which activity? associated the pending intent or created the pending intent. If you want to have it back, you can use it using the pending intent dot get activity. Let me show you an example for it. What we'll be using is, we'll be using a notification builder. So the notification builder is the one that allows to define actions to the notifications like on click of the notification, what do you want to do? It's something that you can take care of with the notification builder. As I said, a pending intent itself is simply a reference to the token maintained by the system. I hope everybody now agrees with me what I was telling you. And it also means that even if it's owning applications process is killed, all right, the pending intent itself will remain usable from its own processes. First line that I'm talking about is if you want to have some actions, like when you click on the notification, if you want to allow an action on it, then you'll be using a notification dot builder interface, all right. So that is what the first line says. The second line says, a pending intent itself is simply a reference to a token maintained by the system. So whenever I associate a pending intent, I'm saying I'm having the reference of something that I have associated with the Android system. All right? And that ultimately means that even if the owning application, for example, I'm having an application running. All right? Now I have closed this application but my application had registered a pending intent with the system, all right? So that pending intent will again be reusable from other processes, all right? For example, I set up the alarm manager, all right? I set up the alarm manager from within my application and I close my application down. Now in this case, the alarm will be set, all right? Because I have registered, registered this alarm with the help of the pending intent, all right? So that is what the three lines means here. Let's see a working example here. Right? 
So here I have created a notification clicked activity and I have created a notification. So let me tell you about this. I'll be calling a notification clicked activity, all right, whenever I take any action on the, on the notification. So what is it going to show me is I'll just show you the show you that what is contained in the XML here. It is just displaying a text view which says you can display new things to the user here. Also this activity will run only even if the application is closed as I had told you because once I have registered the pending intent this will always work. Now let's talk about notifications.java. So this is my first activity. My notifications class extends the activity. I have a button notification. Let me show you this. So what I have is click me to generate a notification button. I go down there. I create a button listener. Inside the button listener, see what am I doing? First of all, I'm creating an intent. The intent that I'm creating here is going to launch the second activity of mine. You all can make this with the help of this intent declaration. I hope this is clear to everyone. It's like something that I'm creating in order to launch the second activity. Let me know if this is not clear to anyone. Then I'm creating a pending intent. All right. So the pending intent is making use of the get activity parameter. So the activity that I'm using for this pending intent is notifications. Start this. Let me show you. It creates a context. The request code. Since I'm using only one request here, so I have kept it as zero. The intent that it needs to use in order to launch the activity. All right. And the flag. The flag variable is something which you can associate, like you can make uh, choices between the various flags, like if the flag is one, you can associate a different kind of an action, that is if you want to launch an activity, you can launch an activity. If you want to raise a broadcast, you can raise a broadcast. So something that way you can associate with the help of flag variables. So here I created the pending intent. After creating the intent for launching the activity, I'm passing it on to the pending intent. Now what I'm doing is, I'm calling a notification object in order to build the notification for me. Everybody understands what I mean by building. Like setting the text, setting the header, setting the drawable. Alright, so this is all the actions that I'm taking here with the help of the notification builder. I'm saying set the content title supported at Eureka.in, set the text, Android class, set the small icon, set the content intent that is which intent it has to use in order to launch up. So I'm associating the pending intent here to the notification mail. Finally call the build so that my notification is ready. When my notification is ready, I just call the notification manager and ask them to notify using my notification mail. Here it also takes an integer identifier. Since I'm only using one notification, so I'm just making use of one identifier. So this is how you will be building up notifications. Let me run this up. So I click on click me to generate a notification and if you see on top I get a notification. I just drag this down. Here you can see the notification title and everything. If I click, I'll be getting a launching activity. Similarly, if I just go back, it will again take me to the click me to generate a notification. If I click again, again, another notification gets generated. If I click on it, it will launch the activity. This is uh, normally what happens with the Gmail application that you have inside your devices. As soon as a new email comes up, what happens is you get a notification. Once you click on the notification, it launches the Gmail application. 